Let me start uh, with a question. Is it better to be a vegetarian in a Hummer or a meat eater in a Prius? <laughs> I'm the second one. That is the question I heard someone ask a few days ago, which for me summed up nicely the kind of a dilemma many of us face every day in our lifestyle choices. But also the one Europe faces as a developed economy. Assuming that we actually care about the environment impact of our behavior, how do we go about reducing the impact? Indeed, do we even measure what that impact is? Jean-Jacques Rousseau wrote in 1762 about a social contract. Today, I'm delighted to have been asked to deliver this lecture named in his honor here in the Lisbon Council. I want to use that opportunity to talk to you about a kind of environmental contract, a pact we have to make between ourselves and our environment for the good of future generations and increasingly for the good of our own generation. I'm a Slovenian and a passionate user of environment. I consider myself to be a very lucky man. If you have visited Slovenia, you will know that my home country is a beautiful place, blessed with a rich heritage of animal and plant life. Indeed, we have more of our land area registered under Natura 2000 than any other member state, 35.5% and average of European Union is approximately 17. I try to get out and enjoy the heritage, heritage whenever I can. I try to be in Slovenia practically each weekend. I appreciate the intrinsic beauty of nature and the way it enhances my life. I care about it just as you, many Europeans do. But is it enough for us to care as individuals? Of course not. Fortunately, we have legislation to limit the excess of our behavior and to impose sanctions on those who pollute and damage. We have spent 40 years developing the environmental laws that have given Europeans cleaner war and air, water and air, whilst ensuring predictability and level playing field for business. Fortunately, we also have some great new technologies that increase energy efficiency in our homes and transport, generate renewable energy, substitute hazardous materials and make other materials easier to recycle. As a former commissioner for science and research, I know just what an impact technology can have. But I will argue today that it's still not enough. Even if we can get the right mix of individual caring, legislation, and eco-technologies, the sheer weight of the combined aspirations and lifestyles of 500 million Europeans is just too great. Never mind the legitimate desires of many other billions on our planet to share those lifestyles. We need to change our behavior as consumers and as producers. And to do that, we need to make our markets work in ways which put the proper value on resources we use. We need to provide the right incentives for our resource efficiency. Then, what is resource efficiency? I would say it is half common sense and half pragmatism. It means using less of what we have to achieve the same or even more. It means managing our resources sustainably throughout their life cycle so as to reduce the environmental impact of their use. It means living, producing and consuming within the physical and biological limits of this planet. 
And so we are clear, let me tell you also what resource efficiency isn't. First, resource efficiency isn't energy efficiency. Energy, it's a hugely important resource, but it's not the only one. We must also consider material resources such as metals, minerals, and food, natural resources which provide services including clean air, water, land. Second, resource efficient growth is not the same thing as low carbon growth. Of course, if we use our resources wisely, we will generally emit less carbon, but the concept of resource efficiency is again wider. In some cases, there can even be trade-offs between carbon efficiency and the wider resource efficiency. Should we flood a valley to produce a hydropower? Third, resource efficiency isn't about promoting the growth of a lucrative niche of eco-innovation companies. Obviously, resource efficiency needs eco-innovation. The two go hand in hand. But we need to green the whole economy not just to develop a promising niche. We need cleaner industry in general, not just cleaning up industries. I have been commissioner for the environment for only a few weeks, but even before I was confirmed in that position in my hearing in the European Parliament, I made it absolutely clear that we must make resource efficiency a central priority. It must underpin our economic strategy for the next 10 years. President Barroso and the College of Commissioners support this aim too, and it has taken more concrete form through EU 2020, which has given new life to Lisbon by adding that we need sustainable growth, promoting a more resource efficient, greener, and more competitive economy, and inclusive growth, fostering a high employment economy delivering social and territorial cohesion. It is a credit to the Commission that during a slump that has seen bankruptcies and bailouts, deficits at an average of 7% and debts at 80% of GDP, that we have resisted to reflex to go for a short-term crisis exit plan. Of course, EU 2020 is designed to hasten the exit from the crisis, but it is also a 10-year strategy providing the building blocks for growth that will be sustainable in the future and which will put pressure on energy and resources. Sorry, which will put less pressure on energy and resources. We need the longest view possible because when the economic crisis happened, the other challenges simply didn't go away. They may not have been on the front pages for a while, but just because GDP fell by 4% in Europe last year doesn't mean that the effects of our growth over the last 20 or even 200 years disappeared, let alone the effects of global population growth or our aging societies and many other challenges. We have done some lasting and quite significant damage. So we knew we needed to define a strategy that reflected a coherent approach to all these challenges. That's why sustainability is written through EU 2020 and why resource efficiency missing from the Lisbon growth and jobs agenda is one of the seven flagship initiatives proposed in its successor strategy.